So welcome to this little Zoom about jewelry, um, about taking care of your jewelry, what to think about. And of course, if you have any questions, please pitch in because uh, it's for you guys. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations last couple of years, but the last couple of months, a lot about how to think about the jewelry you buy, how to take care of it so it can last for a long time. What are things that I do when I travel with jewelry? And then I see uh, clients or friends with their jewelry. I'm like, do you have to think about that, please? Or I said, hey, your jewelry is a bit dirty. You could do something. I know, I don't know what to do with it. And then there's a very simple thing. So I would say there's like almost, if I do it very generalizing it, three steps with three versions, one that I can do at home very easily, one that I can do at home where it's a little bit more professional. And then I have, I can go with my jewelry to some professional people as well. And I also recommend that if you find a good jeweler that does do cleaning work and things like that with jewelry, especially if you wear them a lot or they are a little bit more expensive, um, it's nice to take care of them. It's also helpful for some of the jewelry. It's really also really, really good. We're going to talk about pearls where it is very important to take care of because pearls are still alive and they can so-called die. And you can't do anything, or at least I haven't seen people reviving probes when they, uh, so I call them they die. Maybe there's a professional word for that again, but you'll see the whole uh, luster, the whole shininess of a pearl goes bad and it gets, um, the color changes depending on how, um, what you have done with them as well. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit about that because a lot of people that I know have stringed uh, like pearls, um, necklaces, and it's really good to take care of them. And it's very simple. It's not costy. It can be done by yourself too. Um, I often, I have a good jeweler here in Helsingborg that I give my work to. In, in Scandinavia, it is more costy. In a lot of other countries, it's so not expensive. But I do find somebody that you, you can try them out a little bit, but you get some trust with them. Or you ask somebody that has a lot of jewelry, where have you bought them? Or uh, do you get yours taken care of? And then at some point you will find somebody. And I love with access tools, you start asking questions and people will show up. The information will show up. And your jewelry might also find it because it wants to be taken care of. Um, so those are things also to look at. And then we'll also talk a little bit about where, how to, where to put jewelry when you're traveling as well. So there, you don't damage them because that's very easily done as well. And sometimes we don't think about it and we're quite lucky and we could do very simple things. We can do something about it. <laughs> Just the way when we, for example, I mean, most people don't take off their rings when they wash their hands. That's a good safety thing. But at some point, it's also good sometimes to take them off because they get worn and they don't always like the products we're using when we're washing our hands. And also depends how the stones are set because all these liquid things or soaps, they also make the stones sometimes be more, uh, they can glide a little bit out of where they're set. Uh, and I don't know how many of my clients have lost a stone and often due to things like that, that we can in a simple way also uh, prevent a little bit. Um, I don't mean that you should always take them off, but there's some things where I'm like, we could be a bit more aware and uh, don't put them on the sink. <laughs> don't put them next to you because it's very easy to leave it there when you're ready and you leave the bathroom and Usually the jewelry might also have left afterwards. Um, so those are things just to think about. And I have a some, com, some couple of drinks that I have, so I do remember and um, make sure that I keep it safe as well and all of that. Um, do you guys have any particular questions, any area you'd like to talk about, anything you guys um, have on top of your head? Just let me know if there's anything you have that you know, okay, if this area I would like, or this kind of jewelry I have, or is there any questions you have now? Otherwise, I'm gonna start with one very simple thing. So if you have, let's say you have, let's say I have a ring with a stone. So there's, diamonds are very good because they're not so sensitive 
to anything. They're sensitive to scratch of other metals and other. So diamond is not non-scratchable and it can also chip. So just be aware of that. People say it's the strongest stone. Yes, but it can be damaged. It can also be scratched. Um, usually not as easy, but it does happen. So I just want to say that. Um, one thing I learned, it's an old thing. It's so funny because when you have I don't have any rings that have stones on these sides, but often sometimes they do have stones here. Uh, and one thing is that when you do this, women do this, this version before because they didn't want to damage the, the rings or the stones to each other's hands. Also, really like so funny, small things that I wouldn't even think about before where I'm like, oh, this is why we also do this version. Um, so just small things. <clears throat> but if you have like... Um, ring with stones if it's emeralds sapphires uh, aquamarines uh, citrines they're quite okay being washed at home with what i do is i have a glass of water and then i have some kind of i love this this is so funny disc metal so washing for you wash uh, your dishes so it's dish washing and it's a sensitive, because I was going to say, don't take the most strongest, powerful thing. Um, if you use organic products, it's awesome. If you do, I do it sometimes with these yes and the normal products as well. And it works. It's not like it's going to damage your things. And I just put one or two drops in it. Um, very little, one or two. And then I put the ring and just don't go, bloom, go soft in it. Um, and you can have it there for like 30 minutes. 10, 20, 30 minutes, and then I rinse it off. You don't need to use a brush. You don't need to use anything. If it is like ugly brown on the back side of it, inside, you want to, if you ever want to use a toothbrush, that's what we do when you want to clean things. It should be baby soft. So nothing that is um, strong, soft things. Because when you have put it soaking in water with a little bit of detergent or whatever, can also be a little shampoo, something that's mild. If you have baby products, use them, anything that's very mild. Um, and you put your ring and you soak it there, the dirt is not hard anymore on it. So you just want to, if you ever want to use the brush. But I, I rarely do this when I do more the quick, um, version of cleaning it up a little bit because often when we wear our rings and especially when you have like one stone and it's open what happens is it's in the back side everything starts um it, it starts like finding their way to staying there and making sure that the luster of the stone it doesn't shine as much it doesn't it's not vibrant i can see if it's in the back side basically has dirt it's often um fat it's also some of our products that we've been using it can be creams it can also be from washing that it sticks there it can be uh, anything in the air so after a while this is totally normal it will stick on the back side or under the stone <clears throat> on the underside of the stone and that means the light cannot reflect so the color gets like hmm, unhappy and i often see that with especially with my friends i'm like your ring doesn't look as happy. No, I know I have to do something and something we forget doing. So if you would say you would take once every two or three months and you would just do this version of it, you would already have happier, happier jewelry. Very simple, nothing expensive. It doesn't cost anything. Don't leave it too long. But again, if you do mild things, and this is basically to take off the dirt and the fat, grease or whatever, everything. And this is, I think, it's often just slightly layers. But if you haven't done it for years, there will be bigger layers. And gemstones have this sparkling energy of it because it's the light reflection. How um, stone is cut is created so the light can reflect in and out. That's the whole purpose of the cutting of stones. And, and then there's other things, but that's basically, if you look at a diamond before, now it's very automatic, but before you would look at the stone's composition, dimensions, how big it is to see, how can I cut it? So the most amount of light can come in and reflect out again. So we want this reflection to happen because that's when you see the stone like being sparkly and happy and joyful and, and you look at it and you're like, oh, you like it as well. And then it gets a little dull and it's not shiny as much and so on and so on. But that you can do very easily and not eccentric, very easy. 
you rinse it off with water. Just make sure when you do this, that wherever kind of, um, if you do it uh, at the sink, that you have something plugged in so it cannot run away. Like the water cannot get away. Cause if you, if it falls, if it's an earring, just, just be precautious, take, be careful and take care of you. Of course, if it falls down, you can still manage usually to take it out and if you're good at plumbing. Uh, so that happens, um, but those are small things. I often, after I do that, I just often take it in another glass and just put it in water and then rinse it off and make sure that I have something underneath that if I if I drop it, it doesn't fall or hit any harder surface. So I can sometimes have a plastic bowl underneath or something like that. Because if it falls and it falls to metal, a stone can definitely be chipped or a little bit damaged or something. It doesn't have to, but I'm just giving you the quick version of carrying a little bit more for it. So it doesn't have to happen to you. It doesn't have to happen. That's the thing. And then I to dry, I put it either just in paper or I have a towel or I have anything with um, cotton. Put it there. I just put it over just to so the water, basically anything that whatever wet it is, uh, it gets out of the whole ring um, or piece of jewelry. And of course, afterwards, you can, of course, also a little polish it with either the cotton or I'll show you other products that's really good to have. Those are um, basically made. I don't know if I bought the ones that are... Do I, oh, I have them over there. I'll show you. But there are these products that are made for jewelry. You can buy them basically almost in every jewelry store. We'll have these in diff they're different colors and different shapes and for different um, also um, sizes. So when I have a when I have let's say any jewelry and I know oh, I haven't had you in a hand, I sometimes just do this and just take. I just go over it a little bit because then again. Anything that is on the metal or on the stones, I wipe it off. All metals oxidize a little bit with air. So even gold will sometimes become a little bit more or less shiny due to, because it works, it's a chemical that works with the air. Um, so that I do sometimes as well. So this is the easiest version. Don't be afraid of it. Um, I don't do it as often with pearls or almost never. Um, I use, when I do it with pearls, I use pearl products for that. You can do this version. Um, I can't say I don't recommend it. I have just bought products that I use directly for pearls, um, just because I also know that pearls are a little bit more sensitive. I'm trying also to do whatever I can for them to also last longer. Um, there's a lot of pearls in the world, and there's also not endless amounts of production of pearls. A lot of pearls are also dying in the production. We have also exploded them too much. And if you have older pearls, they can last a long time. You can see pearls that have, are in jewelry for 300 years and they're still beautifully alive. And then you can see pearls where we're doing a quick production of pearls. That means we are basically, the, they're in these beautiful uh, oysters and we're putting in a little pearl, like we're putting a little ball in there. So it creates this pearl and we take it out often too early. So there's not a lot of layers on it. And that makes it also more, more sensitive to everything. It's not as strong always. But again, there's a that that's another Zoom, I guess, to talk a little bit about uh, what to think about when you're buying things. Um, lately, okay, I'll give you a little tip. This is a fun one. Um, how do you know if a pearl is real? And I've had a lot of my friends inheriting pearls and you know often in the 60s and 70s and 50s it was very important to have a pearl necklace it was status it was something every woman almost wore so the easiest version is basically to feel it on your teeth you put it between your teeth don't bite it you just move it a little around underneath your teeth here you'll feel if it's a little sandy if it's totally even it's often plastic so or, or original pearls, real pearls always have a little bit like a um, sense that you're on, a, on something that has a little bit sandy thingy. It's very interesting. Um, try it out. Don't bite it. Just go over with your teeth over it. It doesn't damage it just slightly. <laughs> it's not eatable. And then you'll see the difference, especially you'll notice the feeling of it. And that's a quick one just to know.
Um, and this is all professionals know this and also use this because it's easier than anything else just for you guys to know. Um, what else? So this is the quickest version, right? What I also use so it can be even more, let's say, take off more dirt and also clear it even more, there's products. So I'm just using one brand. It doesn't mean it's the best brand. It's one of the brands that has existed a long time. I, I don't have any rights in this brand. I do like them. I also grew up with them. My parents were antique dealers and I'm eight years old. Uh, I got to clean a lot of jewelry and especially silverware, <laughs> a lot. Um, so I've tried a lot of products as well. There are many good products in different countries. So if you find any other products in your country, use them. Don't try to. But this is um, a product from England. It's called Haggerty. 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. I noticed. Um, and they have different versions. So here it's called Jewel Clean. You'll see here it says um, for gold, platinum, diamonds, sapphires, and rubies. So they have added three stones. That means the chemicals in this product are okay for these. So I wouldn't put in something that I wouldn't put, what is, was it emerald? No, no, emerald's not in here. So I wouldn't put emeralds in here because that might mean that the chemical combination does not work for that stone. So for example, if you have a diamond ring that has emeralds or certain different kinds of stones, let me find the one that is that. You have one that's called fine stones clean. In the old, old days, they didn't have enough of these. This different as distinguishing things, but they found out that they need to do that. This one is for, let me see a little bit of light, for pearls, for uh, emeralds, for opals, for coral, um, pearls, and turquoise. Um, so it's so semi-precious stones as well. And here I would have citrines in as well. Here you can see that they're doing it for the softer stones, the ones that are, have a little bit more, um, that are, are more sensitive. So here I could use more or less any stone in this, but they're putting the bigger no names in it so they know they're covered by these. And as you see, pearls. So in this one I do, it's, it's baths. So they have a little, um, basket in and then you put it in there uh, and I'm say I'm sure it says somewhere how long it is a couple of minutes um, and then I take them out and then again I rinse them I usually put them in water as well for a little while because it, these it's quite chemical and then I rinse it up very thoroughly and again then I dry it I put it out for dry overnight or something and then I use the cloth just to make it so if there's no I don't know, water stains or, you know, water can give a little marks afterwards. So then I use this, but this is the products that I use when I know that needs a little better work with it, if, especially for my own. And I know, okay, I haven't used anything for a long time. Maybe this at least once half a year or something like that. But again, it also depends how much you use your jewelry, how much is it exposed? If it's lying a lot in a box that we don't really want, we want to be using our jewelry. This is really good. It's safe. It's nice for them. You don't damage your jewelry at all with this. Yes, if you would leave it in for a day or a night. I've done it. Da -da -da -da. I've done it once with a pearl ring. I know you can kill a pearl in this liquid. So don't do what I did. I'm just grateful it wasn't very expensive, the ring. And I can still change the pearl because the whole ring setting is really still nice and there's nothing wrong with that. But the pearl... Oops, Lisa, and I forgot it there. So that's so not so smart. And then they also have one uh, that is only for gold as well. And they have more different ones as well. If you have um, other kind of jewelry that's not gold, they have that too. They have her silver and, and all on, on and on. So there is a lot of products and there is different products on the market. So I'm not saying this is the best. This is one I'm used to. I've tried others. Uh, but they have a lot of different ones and they have, so when I order, I can order all of the things I would like. Um, I don't travel with this because it's liquid. If you're ever around or know that I'm traveling with car, I could bring this along, but it's very simple also to order online and you might have other brands. Oh, go, go buy a jewelry store and ask, Hey, I have a ring from 
I inherited a ring and it's very dirty. How do I clean it? Do you guys have any tips or products? You can also go in on its store. My jewelry has the same products as well. So I'm really happy if I need something quickly, I just go down to him, go down. It's in, yeah, it's in downtown and then I get some. So that's also very simple. And those are things you can really do on your own. And you'll see, I get surprised how sparkly my jewelry becomes after just a little bath in that doesn't take a lot of work. I I remember this week has been really funny or, or during the weekend last week, I was like, oh, I have so much new things to clean to just show where it is. Because I sometimes also clean my own before even take it to jewelry just to see how it is and, and what's needed to do. Um, and so I was doing breakfast and doing my dips and I was like, oh, Lisa, watch out. So we don't put anything in my mouth afterwards because it is very chemical. Um, just be aware of that. And then... <clears throat> I also take things to my jewelry because he has different things. They use um, baths that are very different. They use also um, wavelength uh, baths. So they do wavelengths to basically, they don't need chemicals in that. My, my parents had that, but we didn't use it very often at some point because when it was old jewelry, the settings are sometimes very sensitive to that because uh, it also shakes it. So it moves around a bit. But to modern uh, settings, it wasn't a problem. But to older ones, it did happen that it was the stones fell off. And it's good that it falls off because then we can make sure that they sit well again. If they have claws, for example, because when we use jewelry, we sometimes hit, we, we move around, right? So our jewelry are set in claws or in, in um, if they are covered settings uh, over the diamonds, they're very stable. But most, although not most, but a lot of settings are crawls, like a claws like this. So the stone is sitting in these. And when we move around and hit, hit the jewelry a little bit over years, sometimes one or two can move a little bit. And at some point it can move that it can fall out as well. So I recommend finding a good jeweler once in a while taking your jewelry there to prefer professional cleaning and ask them to oversee the settings of the stones especially if you have more expensive jewelry or uh, stones that are bigger or larger you do not want to basically you don't want them to fall off right so it's cheaper to go to a jeweler and ask him to check the settings they can um they can uh, reinforce them. They can even like if there's these these crawls, they can change them if it's required. They can do all of that if they like to. You want to find somebody that like likes working with this and taking care of jewelry, and being also honest with it. I sometimes when I have the old antique things, I go to my jeweler and ask him because I can't with my eye. I'm not as good to see that. I can see certain things. Um, but he can test it and, and, and really feel every stone. And he loves doing that work. So I give it to him, make sure they sit well. So when I sell it, I know this is sitting well and not like the next week, it will most likely fall off. I can never guarantee that it will never, ever fall off because nobody can and nobody knows what we're doing with a jewelry. Sometimes it's just one bump and it moves a little bit. But from all I see and um, from all the antique jewelry I've been working with as well, I'm freaking impressed how well we have set our gemstones and the jewelry and um, in rings and whatever, and that they keep so well. Like if I look at things that I buy that are 100, 150 years old, I'm just like, this is amazing that somebody has been wearing this and it's still that good. And yes, there are some that are worn down where you want to add some gold so it sits better. And then you do that. Um, and that's the things that to look at as well. And a lot of people will never look at it or even say anything about it because why would they? It costs more and all that. And often it works out very well. So trust also. And if you ever get a hint, um, maybe I should take care of my gula. Do something. Your, your jewelry might be talking to you too. And that's one thing as well. Jewelry does give us awareness of what it requires if we're willing to have it. If we don't think, as we don't know sometimes what we can do, we sometimes don't even listen to the information that is there. 
So that is also one thing I always look at. The jewelry often tells them, hey, take care of me. Um, but again, so you have the water with a little detergent, you have the products, and you have to find it. So at some point, it's good to find a jeweler just because they might go and help you out or change your ring size. Uh, so you want to wear something, something that doesn't fit well you will usually never use as often as if it fits well. So if it's too big or too small, take care of that because you will enjoy your jewelry more when it fits. Um, and also if you have something that is too small, if it's collier or necklace, see that you can wear it to, so it works for you. I, for example, recommend everybody when I'm, I, I have worked in auction houses as a um, uh, uh, to basically check everything and um, do valuations, and a lot of people come in with their jewelry that they inherited that they don't want to they don't want to use because it's not the right style and it doesn't look good. And I can say that a lot of people never give the jewelry a chance because you get something often that is quite dirty or been used a lot, and you might need it just like an upgrade. I would. And this is a tell all my friends when I see that they inherit something or somebody I know, take it to somebody, clean it up, and then check if you like it. Because you need also different energy. You And I maybe not do the next month, maybe do it half a year later or something where you have a little bit of distance and can receive it again, but make it, clean it up. So basically what I say, polish it, I, I tell them to clean it and polish it. Polish means that, for example, if there is a ring band, uh, these ring bats are just so like gold. This is now white gold. They will put a layer on it. They put a layer of gold on it. They first polish this and put a layer of gold. It, it just looks like new and has no scratches. It's also something I recommend doing when you have really beautiful jewelry that maybe once every second or third year to do that. And it's very simple for them. It doesn't cost a lot. And it's just something very given in, in our area of expertise of jewelry that we do things. Um, I never looked it up. Rodinering uh, is the word in Swedish where they put a layer over it. And white gold, you always do it. So every jewelry that you buy has a white gold, has an extra layer on top that it's, it is white gold. And then they put another one over on top just to make it uh, more shiny and clear. Um, yellow gold, you can do the same, and they also polish it up so there's no scratches. So if you inherit, first let somebody take care of it, get it, then see how it looks when it is cleaned and polished and, and happy. Then see if you want to keep it. And then you have to look if you're going to switch size it or change anything so it works for you to use, because that's when you give jewelry a chance as well to be there for you and with you. Um, so that's one thing with inheritance. Um, what else do we have? Pearls. <coughs> Number one, when you use, like, say, let's say a pearl necklace, also earrings, rings as well. When you take them off, so let's say we have it on a day, um, we use products. Pearl's biggest enemy is perfumes, creams, um, everything that we often use on our, on our body that is not the favorite friend of pearls. But as we use them, we what we can do is when we take them off is if you have like cotton or anything, or even you have one of these wipes, just be aware this should be for, um, for pearls, but also just the cotton cut, whatever natural cotton, you just wipe it off. Like say if you have a necklace, you just wipe it off very softly. So, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. I was going to take my detergent water, but I don't think there's detergent in it, but I have another one. <laughs> You just softly wipe it off. So the first surface, so surface, whatever is on it gets wiped off. The pearls get really happy of that. And there are these things, um, product things that you can also buy for pearls, specifically for pearls. I noticed I didn't have any, oh, maybe I have another box. Uh, I buy products, give them sometimes also to my clients and all that, but I need to find more. It's something that I want to be able also to maybe sell or something like that. Um, but it's good to have these things. And um, this is also really good. They have these, this is for gold. Um, and there is for pearls, I've seen them. And it's good just to have those things to use at home. Then be also willing to, when you store it, don't store it together with other jewelry so it, they, they can scratch each other. So when it comes to, if you have pearls, I, I only bought now this 
any small bags. This one you can see through, but there's often other with um, any material, just not plastic. Plastic is okay, but not for a longer time. But they really like natural products. So if you have anything with cotton or um, summit, uh, oh, the word in English, velvet and things like that. Or you have a little box to put it in. Just if you have a jewelry box, just make sure that the pearl things don't go along and lay around with other things because they will be scratched easier. The same thing when you travel, put it in a little bag of its own. I, I usually do that with all my jewelry when I travel. But pearls also to know. So a pearl, is, pearl per se is really good and happy and all that. When we make a hole in them, when we string them, there's holes in them, right? So <clears throat> through the holes, the dirt comes inside the pearl. That's basically the biggest problem with a stringed necklace is the string. So I remember having this conversation with a jeweler because I restringed a lot of my necklaces. And he said, well, you do it at least once a year. And I was like, but it doesn't cost a lot. I don't know. And I haven't done it now for a while. And hey, I don't I get maybe business deals as well because I am in business with him. Um, maybe it cost me 50 euros, 30 euros. I can't remember. You could do this at home too. And I can just say, Google how to restring a pearl necklace and make sure that have the small knots in between and what kind of string. Often I say cotton strings, um, just for them not to have any chemicals and plastic, don't use that. Uh, you, when you restring, there's a little dot, knot in between every pearl so they don't hit each other. That's also important. But I'm not a restringer. I'm not an expert. I just know how to how they should look. Um, I know basic stuff. There's more information on YouTube. Enough information how to string, and it, and it should not be too tight as well. So there's a little thing to, to watch out. And then I give it to my jeweler. Hey, can you do this? And I was like, oh, that's much easier if he does it. Um, and he's happy with it. He loves the word I bring to him. But it's not hard to do. And I know a lot of people that do it themselves as well. I have just not chosen to do that. And that's, again, just a choice. He said once a year. I say every second year. I did, again, if you use it very often, you look at the string. You look between the pearls and see if it's same color as it was when it was fresh. Or it becomes a little grayish or brownish then it's time to restring because that means there's too much dirt. And when that moves into the pearl, it's really not easy to get out of the pearl. And that's how they get damaged. When the dirt comes into the pearl and it's in the pearl, it gets in the walls and then it dies from inside out. And that's a bummer. And again, it's a little bit, not luck and unlucky. You could have a pearl necklace never restrained for 20 years and nothing happens. Um, so, but then again, you also have the thing that it can break um, if it doesn't hold. So there is the dirt thing and there is the safety thing. And it's a choice, but don't panic. Don't think, oh, I have to do it. I haven't done it for five years. Hey, most likely nothing will happen. But I'm, and it was so funny when he said every year, I'm like, who do you know who does it once a year? <laughs> but that's from his knowledge and point of view, right? And then we adjust it to whatever we feel comfortable with, finding somebody, all that. I'm just giving the information because if you look at the string between the pearls and it's really dirty, it is so not costly and makes such a difference for the pearl. So why not contribute to a pearl, right? Any questions so far? Hi. Um, is it very obvious to tell like when a pearl dies and when it's still living? Like, is it yeah. easy to tell? And if that happens, like you said, with your ring, do you really, I mean, of course you don't have to, but could you go on and just wear it like that? Or yeah. I mean, this is where there's nothing wrong with that, but usually they will not be the luster goes away. So, you know, when it's shine, a pearl shines, 
and they have different and they're different colors like they can be white they can be gold they can be pinkish uh they can hold these different and then you have black pearls and brown pearl not brown pearls uh blue pearls and gray pearls and all that um but you'll basically see that there is no shininess and often they change color too if it's a wild pearl white pearl they can go into grayish and brownish uh, so you will see it. it it doesn't look happy um at all it doesn't look as a pearl anymore I was like, where do I have mine that isn't, but you would maybe not see it on a Zoom because it's kind of white, but the whole pearl, a whole pearl, whatever it's on that, everything's like not there. It just looks, um, I should take a photo and send it to you guys. It just doesn't look good at all. Uh, and you can Google it. You can definitely wear it. It's up to you, of course. But one thing as well, if you have a ring, and there's one pearl, you could change the pearl. The pearl is not, not the most expensive thing to change. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. I didn't even know about this. No, I know most people don't and, and most people will never encounter it or find one or see one. I've seen quite a few when I go to, um, uh, what do you say? Oh, it's called Dutzbu in Swedish. When people die and uh, and they want to look and evaluate stuff, I've been there very often to evaluate stuff. And then I see you come to the jewelry box and open it up. And then I've seen quite a bit of pearls that are, have not, um, well, basically not survived, not been happy, or one or two out of a whole pearl access. Didn't you just take them out or change them? So that also is possible. But again, I don't think most of you will ever have one that is not happy or or dead. It just, I'm also talking about to prevent things that are very simple to take care of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still learning about pearls, like even if they're real or not. So that's, this is like adding one new thing. I'm like, oh, wow, that's another layer of it. <laughs> like, and you did hear the part where you can feel it on your, uh, on your teeth, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, I've tried all this. Hmm. You know how we can ask questions and access. So I'm like, are you real? <laughs> yeah, but if you, if you don't feel that, it's not real. So you can ask questions as much as you like. It's very easy to test it. Just do, because there's like, the, you have the questions, but also use the facts. So use the facts and then ask. But if, if the facts don't work out, you might just also be aware that this so-called pearl or whatever it is might just like you as well so just be aware there can also be other things as well going on there mm -hmm. okay thanks you're welcome i mean i remember gary when he bought what did he buy a coin or something like that it wasn't real gold so it's not that we don't make errors it's just what i notice. what i love with gary when he talks about like anything you want to know more about is educate yourself because the knowledge what the education gives you will change so much about the awareness you will receive as well and sometimes when you ask a question it can also be that item just wants to be with you as well so um there's a lot of questions to be asked but also have some knowledge because it does help yeah yeah for sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, it's this, for example, uh, in general, nowadays, most jewelry is stamped with 14 karat, 18 karat, 20, 21, and so on. In the old days, that was not a standard, for example. Jewelers did it, but it wasn't a standard that it had to be. There was no laws. You had to mark them with the amount of gold that is in that jewelry piece. So, for example, my parents started the jewelry business only with antique jewelry. Everything was about, it wasn't, after 1940s, they didn't buy anything. Sometimes about 1950s, but it was like antiques, mostly from Art, in, Art Nouveau, Art Deco, and from late 19th century. A lot of that jewelry is not stamped, doesn't have a stamp that makes it, this is gold. Um, there's certain countries they only work standardized with 18 karat gold they didn't even need a stamp because everybody knew it was like that and then there is you can test that any jewelry can test that my parents and my dad still I think has it in his, at his home you have some acids where you can put on you just take a file off a little bit of the gold and you can do and then test the goals and that's something really good to do especially if they're not 
been tested before. And if you buy anything where a dealer says it is, let's say 14 karat gold, please let them write it down if you don't know them. Um, Because if it's not correct, you want to be able to say, hey, this is not correct. And basically the standard would be they would take it back. But again, I can't promise that. There's, There's a lot of business going on in the world. But for example, I do have pieces where there has not been a stamp. Sometimes I ask my jeweler to stamp it. Uh, They don't always like doing it. Um, I think there's something weird with that. And I don't know why. I've heard it several times, but he still does it when I ask him. For me, it's not important when I know what it is, but it's also, I grew up with this. This is nothing strange for me. Um, People think, well, the stamp is right. Yes, until there is somebody that stamps something that is not correct. That can happen. Um, is not very common. I just say it's not very common. Uh, in Europe, very uncommon. Uh, there are countries where you deceive customers more. So be aware of that, and depending on what country you're in and where you buy things. Um, and then, of course, the pricing and all that depends also on the quality of whatever is, if there's stones or gem tones and things like that. Um, any question about the, the cleaning or taking care of or anything like that? Then I'm going to go over to a little bit of the traveling or, I mean, if you're at home, you can have any jewelry box or any box you like, just don't make, make sure that they're not rubbing on each other so much and not laying on top of each other. If they have sections and you put the rings in there and the earrings lies in there, do that. Please have it covered up. So in a box that you can um, close so it doesn't interact with the air all the time because you will see that the, the gold gets a little more less shiny over time. But again, then you have this and you can always then refresh it a little bit. It's so fascinating when I was on, um, working with my parents and antique markets every weekend because you have them displayed then every day. Um, I almost use this every time we uh, set up a new uh, display. So every week, I almost use it on every jewelry. And I could see if we haven't used it or not. Something my father was away on his own and he didn't do it. Um, <clears throat> and then I come along and I was like, they don't look as shiny and happy. And then I took the, just polish a little bit and did you, you, takes no time and they were shiny again i'm like oh and then of course if you touch them our our fingers have a little grease it will sit on the stones as well so those are the simpler uh fixing up helping them and all that these things i will see if i can buy a lot because everybody's going to ask about them i guess um also easy to buy online if you ever wonder or need or let me ask So, for example, one thing to be aware of, if I don't have a handbag with me when I am going to the bathroom or I know I want to wash my hands more, I always use one of these pouches. I have something with me where I put my rings in them and then I put them, for example, in, in um, in my pants or if I have a pocket. If I don't, a bra is really good. If not, somewhere where I can squeeze it in. But what I've noticed is that for me, for example, if I don't use this and just put the ring inside, sometimes I keep on forgetting that I had put my rings in my in my uh, pockets or something like that. If I'm a handbag, I notice just recently I put it in the little in the little pocket inside the handbag, and I forgot that it was there. And I was like, oh, listen, that's not good because then you put something else in there, and that's easy to get that it gets scratched. So small of these pouches, I found something that I also like. It's like a small little box. Uh, this is for jewelry. You don't see it, but it's it's not very thick, thick and deep, but you could put, ow, oh, that's not smart. You could put a ring or two in these. These can, these are good for traveling. These are also good if you need a little bit thing in your handbag. Because for example, if I do something and I know I'm going to get dirty, I take off my rings, I put it in there in my handbag and I know it's stored well. And then I do whatever I'm doing. Um, and then I don't have to think about where did I put my rings? Ah, oh, it's in my little boxy um, in, in my handbag. So think like this. And you see that it's hard covered. Very good. Because I thought about how it's hard covered great, my accountant calling, Um, hard covered is that it cannot get dented. Like there's nothing pressure that will damage whatever I put in here. And that's basically my main topic in everything when I'm traveling. 
I use anything that everything that's soft can be squeezed, can be damaged in some way. And that I want to prevent in general. So for example, when I was traveling and I didn't have, I now have bought a lot of boxes and I'll show you, but if you don't have, you might buy something. Um, this came from a, I think this came from one of my travelings. I think these came, if it was a business class or something like that, and they hard cover it. So when you open up, I could put things. Yes, Qatar. <laughs> this is funny. Oh, I love Qatar's business. One of the best flights. Um, here they even have the small pockets here. You can put things in here. But this is really good. And what I do then, I put, I buy things like this, pouches or small, small bags, or you want, yeah, basic small bags so they cannot fall out. And then you, I would store them in here because this doesn't get squeezed and damaged. A lot of people use soft things, soft bags. It's okay. But when you put it in somewhere and often people don't have that much space, it can be squeezed. And then maybe an earring gets a little, the backside gets squeezed. There's things that can happen. So the more of these things that have a little bit of, a, you know, you can't squeeze them. It's perfect. I love it. You don't have to have the perfect uh, jewelry box or anything like that. It can be something like this you travel with. Then inside, you have just have to watch out what you do. So then I put it. So when I was in Mexico, I bought client, small pouches. Uh, this will also be for clients um, that I can close. Here, a necklace can be inside or a ring or whatever it is. And then I can put it in here as well. So small things like that. These things you can buy also in a lot of jewelry places or when you do um, in a lot, of, a lot of stores. I was like, where do I find them? Um, I must not buy it online nowadays, but there are stores. I, I remember buying them where they were uh, doing small, small necklaces of plastic things. They had these pouches as well, or these small bags for that as well. Um, then what has been coming to the market a lot is smaller jewelry boxes. This one is open. Where you have, for the rings, you have also these compartments. Here's with a mirror. Uh, here's a lot as well. And here you can hang things. And just be aware because somebody says, yeah, put it there. But when I open, it's all over the place. Yes, exactly. So when I put things in here, I also put it and wrap it around um, paper in here. So I wrap it around a paper or put paper over there so it cannot fall out and in all the time. So when I'm traveling, it will move around. So I don't just put it in there and then I travel with it. I make sure it cannot jump out of the compartments. Um, that was one of them I bought and one of that I really liked uh, if you're traveling with more. But I use this at home too. Uh, let me see here. This is a bigger one I bought. These compartments are almost always, you can take them out because you can put something bigger. Um, so they're movable and added it. I like these as well because I can put the earrings here and then they have a little hidden compartment here and here and I love the ring part of it often they sit very well in the ring and these you have to just watch out when they when you travel put something there so it doesn't move around if I have earrings I put in napkin small piece of napkin uh put it in there so they're stored and they don't and again don't put the jewelry together put one layer of napkin in between everything as well because you never what you want to think about is that they do not touch each other to um, if it's diamond, it's usually not happening so much, but sapphires and emeralds and all those are softer. They can be scratched more. The gold can also be scratched. So those are just things that we want to just prevent a little bit and care for them a little bit. So those are also really good for traveling and good if they can close. And I like the other one because there's a zipper around it. Uh, I don't know how often it, when they move around, you don't want it to fall out in some way. So always good with zippers. That was some of the things I have. Okay, when I travel with chains, some people have these too, or some kind of, these are soft bags again, huh? This is, jewelers have a lot of this, or business people have a lot of here. So you put, you can put necklaces here, you can put uh, bracelets here, and then you put the, roll them together and you can travel with them. Again, I have to watch out if I, I don't travel very often with these, but I do have them at home. Again, I don't want them to be, be able to be squeezed and damaged. So then I have to think about the next step after that. 
So that was a little bit of that. Is there any questions about that? So I think that was most of the things I had for today when it comes to traveling and caring for your things and what you can do at home easily. And I would definitely start there. Don't make it complicated. If it doesn't feel light, don't do it. Um, and just try out if you have a ring with a diamond in it. Like try the version when I did the first one with the water and a little detergent, you'll see the difference. And for example, if you have a diamond ring, do it often, you'll see the difference. That's the thing. And you can't damage them with that at all. Uh, but your ring will be happier. Your body might enjoy it as well. And especially when you look at it, you will enjoy it a lot more. So enjoy it. And if you have any questions, uh, if there's something you're wondering about, uh, please send a little message. Ask me if I know, I'll give you the information. If I don't know, I don't know. But I love how we can all contribute to each other. And there is a lot of information out there. And I also see there is not so much information reaching always out there. Um, and that, that's a little bit of a bummer because we can do a lot with our jewelry to make it last for a long, long, long time. And we can enjoy it for a long time as well. So that's why I invited everybody. Let's take care of our jewelry even more and travel safely and nicely with it. So thank you guys for everything. Um, and we'll see each other again for some updates or some knowledge input about jewelry. Thank you, everybody, and have a beautiful evening. Bye, guys. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.